In this video, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate how we utilize our 3D printed surgical guide fabricated from the Blue, Blue Sky Plan software and how we adapt that to the locator overdenture implant system. In front of you, I've got a prototype of our patient's 3D printed surgical guide fabricated from our radio opaque PBS impression technique and then subtracting our holes to fit for our drill stops. Putting this aside for a second, I also have a little kind of a, a dummy representation of a patient's mandible, as well as with a very similar approach here, just a little bit easier to see for demonstration purposes. And also I've got my standard locator overdenture implant system surgical kit. If you need any help with the surgical kit and how to utilize it for your surgical procedures, check out my other videos. As I open up my Lodi surgical kit, the central tenant of what we're trying to do is, is we're going to use our pilot drill, which is a 1.2 millimeter diameter drill, with our drill stop that is adapted to our pilot drill, or 1.2, at the length of the prescribed implant that we wish to place. Following my locator overdenture implant system surgical technique manual, I begin the surgery with a pilot drill matched with a drill stop of the implant length. The same thing is what we're going to do here with our 3D printed surgical guide from the Blue Sky Plan software. In our Blue Sky Plan software, I've chosen the diameter of our guide tubes to correspond with the drill stop diameter. The idea here is, is, is that as I'm drilling, I'm going to use the outer wall of my drill stop to give me some angle or trajectory control while it's on the patient's edentulous ridge. And now further demonstrating with an actual surgical handpiece, I'm going to pop it on here. When I'm going into the patient's mouth, the idea here is, is that I'm going to go ahead and utilize my drill, not rotating it or turning it on just yet, placing it lightly into that hole, and now activating the drill and drilling down until it punches through all the way. By doing that, I've sized these little tube holes to correspond with the diameter of my drill stop in my locator overdenture implant system. So a few different methods of approach of how we can do this is, is we can go ahead and just start with our 1.2 drill to our 12 millimeter drill uh, stop if we're going to place a 12 millimeter long implant. Alternatively, what you can also do is just artificially drill short on your first drill through the guide say I want to start with an 8 millimeter drill stop, it gives me a little bit longer drill stop for me to go ahead and correct any sort of positional errors. So what I want to do is I'm placing this onto the edentulous ridge and I'm going to place my 1-2 drill in until that drill stop is just starting to contact the edges of that uh, virtual guide tube, now 3D printed guide tube. So say I'm a little bit short, if I place it on here I'll just arbitrarily pick a very long drill stop on the 14 millimeter one, snap it onto here. And I'm going to zoom in just a touch so you can see it a little easier. Say I place this onto the edentulous ridge and I get to here and it's not contacting anywhere. I recommend not using that exact drill stop length even though I might be placing a 14 millimeter long implant. And instead, I'm going to go ahead and choose a size, this case, a 10 millimeter long drill stop. When I place this onto my patient's edentulous ridge, I'm now going to go ahead and verify that it's down all the way. And here, I would still maybe even want something a little bit shorter. I've got a lot of play there. So I'm going to go ahead and dial down to just my 6. I'll pull out my 6 millimeter long drill stop, snap it onto here. And then the same thing, now I have good contact. And now the idea of this is, is that as I'm drilling through, it's going to give me a bodily positional indicator. As I'm drilling through, it gives me a bodily positional indicator in the center of the osteotomy. Now this just gives you a general idea. It's not a completely guided, blind approach. You still need to drill straight because watch, I still have a little bit of wobble to that drill and the drill stop. So as a prototype, this guide tube hole is a little bit smaller. Those are about 3.8 millimeters. On my patient demonstration, I used 4.1 with a nice cutaway because all I wanted to do was just get in the ballpark. When I was drilling onto the edentulous ridge here, 
I want to go ahead and just allow me to go ahead and have some basic bodily positional as well as trajectory control. And continuing forward, I can go ahead and utilize this approach with all of my surgical drills if I wanted to. Putting away my 1.2 millimeter pilot drill, I can do the same thing with my 1.6. And say I was putting in a 2.9 millimeter by 12 millimeter long implant, my 1.6 millimeter drill, I would still drill to full length. And then the same thing here. I would place on my 8 millimeter long drill stop for my 2.1 millimeter drill. Snapping it onto here and then placing it into my handpiece. This allows me to complete all of my osteotomies directly through this surgical template if I wanted to. Most important part though is as you'll see in the clinical videos is that when I place it into the osteotomy I want to go ahead and place the drill not spinning. So I'm going to lightly place it into my initial hole and then spin straight down until I reach my drill stop depth. And the genius of this too is, is, is that I don't have to worry about depth control in my surgical guide because I have my drill stops controlling my, my drill, drilling depth. Alrighty, in our clinical demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and take my 3D printed CBCT guide and fit it just like a conventional denture. You can also use PIP indicating paste just to verify it fits down all the way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my 1-2 pilot drill with my 12 millimeter long drill stop and just drill through the center of my cutouts of my surgical guide. Following that up with I'm going to go ahead and use my just traditional uh, Lodi tissue punch. My Lodi tissue punch allows me to go ahead and just precisely excise the tissue in that area. Continuing forward, it does help to go ahead and place the Lodi punch, which has a 1.2 pin through the initial osteotomy, and then just twist lightly. By doing so, we'll make a very precise cut of that soft tissue, which is easy for me to remove either with a curette or with a hemostat as shown here, carefully teasing this away. After the completion of the tissue punch, I can use my second drill, just according to the Lodi Technique manual, since I'm placing a 2.4 by 12 millimeter long implant, my first drill would be 1.2 millimeter to full length, and then the 1.6 millimeter to 4 millimeter short, which in this case would be an 8 millimeter drill stop on there. So placing my drill through the osteotomy, I can just carefully uh, activate my motor, seating down all the way until the drill stop contacts bone. After irrigating with just a saline solution or sterile water, we're going to go ahead and take our Lodi implant, a 2.4 by 12 millimeter long implant on my handpiece, carefully in with the isolatch driver into our osteotomy just freehand, placing until I feel firm resistance of the bone as well as the torque settings on my handpiece. On my handpiece, I like to use a 30 or 35 Newton centimeter torque setting to verify that I'm going to get good primary stability during my procedure. Using my torque ratchet, I can go ahead and then ratchet the implant to full depth. By doing so, it just uses the either short or long square adapter on my torque wrench, carefully um, rotating clockwise until the implant is at full depth. I can go ahead, pause recheck my position and angulation because we have a self-tapping implant with an aggressive apical end we have to be careful of the direction that we're going to be placing these continuing forward with our additional implants in our other sites placing with our handpiece and then finishing up with a torque ratchet manual insertion verifying to complete depth as well as insertion torque as we continue with our further implants it becomes very expeditious as well as nice and conservative with this approach. Placing our locator abutments individually just using our finger insertion tool as well as the core tool with our little snap cap over the top so that way it stays in place while we place it in the mouth. It does help to have here just a little bit of a 2x2 two two gauze just to prevent from any sort of aspiration risk. As I'm lightly tightening those down with my fingers I'm going to go ahead and verify that the soft tissue looks great and the locator is just slightly above the soft tissue. After confirming full finger tightness, I'm going to go ahead and take for a panoramic radiograph. The radiograph shows the implants are properly placed, verifying the abutments are fully seated down all the way. 
and this gives me a chance to go ahead and make any modifications if I need to. At this point, I can take my locator insert on the top of my uh, torque ratchet insert and then torque my abutments down to 30 newton centimeters each. If my implants went in at less than 30 newton centimeters, it's okay to take it to the torque level that the implants went into. And in case uh, you don't want to go ahead and advance your implant using your locator abutment, I'm going to verify that the torque setting is correct for each one of these implants. Each implant in this particular patient torqued above 30, 35 newton centimeters, so I felt comfortable with immediately loading. However, in this particular patient, we decided to go ahead and utilize a transitional soft liner. What I'm going to be doing here is just going ahead and just using a series of acrylic burrs, either this pear-shaped burr or an acrylic burr, an 84T tapering burr, just to go ahead and remove all the existing soft liner that was present in her denture before the surgical procedure. Starting in the anterior and working my way back, I'm just going to use these burrs just to create a trough on the anterior portion of where the implants are to facilitate the uh, fabrication and the lining of the soft liner, the chair side soft liner. As I trim that away, it's also helpful to go ahead and use this and to do this in a laboratory bench setting with good suction just because it creates a mess. I'm going to take out my chair side soft liner bonding agent and uh, liberally apply that to any of the areas of the intaglio surface of the complete denture. It does help to thoroughly dry this material. As I take that to the mouth, I'm just going to take my chair side soft reline material and inject it, completely covering the intaglio surface of the complete denture. As I do that, I'm just going to go ahead and trace from one side of the denture to the other, ensuring I have a modestly liberal amount of this material everywhere, especially in the area of the anterior troughing. As my assistant goes ahead and hands me the spatula, I'm just going to take my chair side soft liner and carefully just roll my borders. This is very much like what you would do with a traditional PVS reline impression. We want to go ahead and make sure that my soft liner covers everywhere around the patient's uh, edentulous ridge and our fresh implant sites. I have the patient instruct her to go ahead and close down into MICP or centric occlusion. And then while she's in that centric occlusion, I'm just going to carefully tease around the borders of the peripheries of the patient's existing denture. As I do that, it does create functional movements to facilitate the soft liner adaptation to the patient's ridge. Following up, I have the patient stick out her tongue all the way, move it side to side, and then to swallow lightly. I let that sit in place for approximately two to three minutes. After two to three minutes, the material has completely set, and I remove it from the mouth. After removing from the mouth, I take that back to my laboratory bench, where I use a series of just the chair side grinding burrs, or I'll go ahead and touch it up also with just a, just a sharp 15 blade or 25 laboratory bench blade. After doing so, it carefully excises just the peripheral portions that might be covering either the occlusal surfaces or the facial portion of the denture. I then switch back to my black coarse point just to polish the edges to complete the smoothing of the peripheral portion of my chair side soft liner. I then use my brown polishing wheel just to go ahead and smooth out any of the areas that are on the facial portion or on the lingual portion of the denture. We're going to go ahead and seat that onto the edentulous ridge, placing the denture on top of the soft tissue as well as slightly engaging the fresh implants that have been placed. We're going to verify that the patient is going properly into centric occlusion and completing the procedure. 